Hi, I'm Penny, and I'd like to welcome you back to Open Hand Farm. Today, we're in the kitchen, and we're continuing my series on a more healthy eating plan. One of the things I would like to try that I have not ever done before is eating sprouts that I have sprouted myself. For about five months, we have been sprouting lentils for our chickens to, to help them through their molt and through the winter. We could be eating these lentils and they would be very healthy for us. But I don't really like lentil sprouts because the lentil itself is kind of thick and wet. <laughs> so I would like to try broccoli sprouts. There's lots of sprouts out there that you can try you can look it up on the web. I know one that I'm very familiar with is alfalfa sprouts that I have bought at the store many times and I enjoy eating them because they're small. The seed is small. So the broccoli seed is also very small, but I have learned that broccoli sprouts are more nutritious for you than some of the others. So I've decided to start there. Um, aside from being loaded with vitamins and minerals and lots of protein, broccoli sprouts also contain lots of enzymes. Um, I've learned that if you eat a lot of cooked vegetables, which are good for you, your body has to create the enzymes necessary to process food. But broccoli sprouts has that enzyme in it so your body can spend more time working on all the other essential enzymes that it needs for our energy, for our nerve function, for brain health, and that's just to name a few. Um, broccoli contains an organic compound or phytochemical called sulforaphane. It's a tricky one, <laughs> which is what makes broccoli sprouts so healthy for you. Um, when we chew the sprout, that action actually activates this compound. The sprouts are much more healthy than just eating broccoli. Here are some of the benefits of eating sulforaphane or broccoli sprouts. Brain boosting ability. It protects the brain and enhances the brain function. It has the ability to protect healthy cells, target mutated cells, and encourage the growth of healthy cells. It helps with heart health. It's also a detoxifier. It aids in boosting liver function. It neutralizes the free radicals. Those are bad, we don't want those. There are many other benefits that I have read about that are associated with sulforaphane. Say that three times fast from broccoli sprouts. <laughs> I have a couple of links in the comments that you can go to, but please, by all means, search for yourself and find out why you should be eating sprouts, especially broccoli sprouts. Now, remember, I am not a doctor. I am, I am not a dietitian. I just know that when I eat things that are a healthier form of food and a more raw form of food, I feel so much better. And I do have friends and even stories myself of how eating raw foods have healed parts of their bodies. I want to show you the different steps that we take in making the lentil sprouts and I will do the same steps to make broccoli sprouts. So let's get started. The lentils I'm using are brown lentils, but you can use green lentils and I try to do organic. The first thing you need to do is soak your lentils overnight. Now, we're not gonna soak a whole jar like this. We are gonna pour about a half of a cup into this jar and soak those. I keep this on my cabinet next to my other jars just to make it easy because this is gonna be a daily thing that you do. And you don't wanna have to be going back and forth, grabbing your lentils out and using them and then putting them away back and forth. It's just easier this way. Now, another thing I did to make it quicker to do this process is 
I put a line on the jar with a permanent marker so that I know when I'm filling my lentils, I need to go to that line and that way I don't have to go get a measuring cup and measure it out. I'm all about the easy guys. Then it doesn't really matter how much water you put in. I fill the jar about half full. I have these lids that I got from Amazon. They are a very fine mesh screen. Before I got these, I just used cheesecloth, folded it over twice, and I put it on the jar and put a band on to hold it in place. The problem with this is that because some of this fabric overhangs the side of the rim, it gets wet and it's drippy and it's kind of gross. So <laughs> I found these lids, they were not real expensive. They come in a package of four and you'll see why here in a minute. So I just use those and they work great. Now what you do next is leave this sit overnight. But as you can see, I have three more jars here and these jars, are all in different stages of sprouting. This jar was the jar that was being soaked yesterday. I dumped all the water out and I rinsed them. Now this will be your biggest rinse because it's surprising the kind of sandy silt and dirty water that comes off of these. You'll want to rinse it a couple of times. So you get most of the water out and then you kind of put them on the side. This is just something I had around the house. They have these little feet on them so you can even turn the jar upside down. I would put a towel under it or something because you are going to have some water dripping out. You could just leave them like that. I feel like they sprout better if I kind of distribute them throughout the jar and then lay them in here. The next jar is what it looks like on the second day. You'll see some little sprouts starting. This is the process every morning. I take the jar that has been soaking overnight, I dump it out and I put it in the last position of my container. Then I take the second jar, I rinse it again, pour the water out, shake it down to lay flat, and put it in. The third jar that's in my container, you'll see has much bigger sprouts. Now this jar, I rinse, I pour all the water out, I shake it sideways, and I lay it here. For this day, I have a jar soaking, I have a jar that was soaking yesterday, a jar that was soaking the day before, and a jar that was soaking the day before that. Then every night I will rinse these again. But this time what I do is I take the first jar that has the sprouts on it and I will take the lid off of it because now, this is just my process because this is what I do with them. And I set it over on a countertop for Mark to take to feed the chickens the next day because they are ready to be fed to the chickens. Chickens cannot eat lentils if they're raw. They have to be cooked or sprouted. So that's why we sprout them. This jar will be set aside for Mark to carry off to the chickens. And these two jars, I will just rinse and put back in here. Now the next morning, Mark will take these out to the birds and bring the empty jar back in. I will then rinse the partially sprouted lentils, lay them down and put them in my first jar position. I take this jar, rinse them, pour the water out, spread them out, Put them in my second space. Then the jar that's been soaking overnight, I dump all the water out and rinse it and then shake them to be on the side and put them in the first jar place. This jar that is now empty because Mark took these to the chickens 
will become my soaking jar. So I will take it, add lentils to it, put water on it, and set them aside to be soaking overnight. Every night, I do the rinse, leaving the one alone that's soaking overnight. So there will be three. Every morning, you rinse. So it's a morning and evening thing. Some of you are probably thinking that is too much trouble, not even gonna do it. But I have to tell you, it does not take very long at all. It is maybe two minutes to pour water in, shake it around, shake it out. And that's due to these lids. You don't have to take the lid off ever. You just throw water in, shake it around, dump the water out and lay the jar down. Very easy. That is how we do our lentils. We will be doing our broccoli the same way. Now we're going to make some broccoli sprouts. My first thought was, is this screen small enough for broccoli seeds to not fall through? So I laid a couple of seeds on top of the screen on this lid and they are not going through it. They're just rolling around on it. So I know that I'm good there. Now, if you do a seed that is smaller and you're afraid they're gonna go through the screen, you could put a layer of cheesecloth on under the screen. For the broccoli sprouts, I decided to only do pint-sized jars to start with. I don't know how often I'm going to eat them. I don't know if Mark's going to eat them. I just know that I want to start incorporating them into my diet. I might end up using quart-sized jars like I do with the lentils, but for now, I'm sticking with pint size. And I just happen to have a basket that four pint-sized jars will fit So what I need to do is start my first jar. Now this jar will soak overnight. I looked on a website by the name of The Spruce to see how they do it. And they do one to two tablespoons of seeds. Now these are seeds just like the seeds that you would plant in the garden except that it's a big bag. <laughs> I will leave the link where I found this one on Amazon down below. This one has so few seeds and I'm gonna be having to pour from the bag. So I've decided that I will just find a tablespoon measurement that I don't mind leaving in the bag to use every day so that I don't have to go find one and come back and measure out. I just open the bag and there it is. Again, I want it to be easy. I am, however, going to make a line for my water because they suggest only adding two inches of water. So I'm just going to hold my ruler up to two inches and make a mark. That will be my water line. That will make it much easier than having to guess how full I need to make it and I just fill up to that line. Then I add my lid and I will just let this one soak overnight. Tomorrow, I will take this jar and I will start seeds in it. Now I am going to go ahead and mark all of my jars for my two inch water line. That way, I will be ready to just move right along with the process the next few mornings. That's ready to go. After I get all four of these jars filled with the broccoli seeds and sprouts started, I'll come back and show you how they look. These have soaked overnight, so I'm going to shake the water out, put some more in to rinse it, Take it out to lay sideways, and that goes back in the basket. This is the second day that I'm just starting these, so now I will start another jar. And each day, I will add a jar to the process. I will not show you this every day, I'll just come back when it's done. Now this is a half tablespoon measure. It's the only one that I had that I didn't mind 
taking out of my measuring spoons that I use all the time. Remember that I made a line with a Sharpie so that I know where to put the water to. Put the lid back on and I will just put it back in the basket, sitting more up than down so that the water doesn't come out. That took about three minutes and I'm doing two different kinds of sprouts. So as you can see, it's not a hard process at all. It's not really time consuming. It's just one little thing you have to remember each morning and each evening. Here we are six days later. This jar I started the first day that I did the video. Then I started this jar, this jar, and this jar. So they're all in different forms of sprouts right now. This one is the biggest. I'm gonna get some of these out so you can see. So they are pretty long. You can see that. And there's a little root on the end of it. And that is the way I wanted them. Now they could have been eaten on day three or four or whenever a sprout started. Now this one was started on day four. So it's really not that much smaller. So there's one from day six and one from day four. So I guess there is quite a difference. But like I said, you could eat these as soon as they start sprouting. I just wanted them to be longer. Now I wanna tell you how to properly store your sprouts. I poured mine out of this jar into this bowl so that you can kind of see the little brown spots that are in there. These are the skins off of the seeds. So what we need to do is rinse them off. I'm going to use this colander that has a bigger line instead of just some mesh. Yes, the holes are coming out. I'm gonna The next step is to spin them dry in a salad spinner. Actually, maybe I'll use my salad spinner. You guys are learning with me here. I'm kind of just rubbing them a little bit to loosen up the holes. Not bad. We'll go ahead and spin them. So apparently the important thing is to dry them well. They will store for a longer period of time if you dry them well. Let's see what we got here. Some of the holes came out with just that process, so that's helpful. What I'm gonna do is use this same bowl, kinda dry it off, put some paper towel in the bottom of it, and put the sprouts kind of loosely on top. And then I will cover this with saran wrap and it's suggested to poke some holes in it so that they don't get too moist in there and mold. There are my sprouts. Now you might ask, all right, you got your sprouts, so now what? The conditions that causes a seed to sprout can also cause E. coli. So you'll want to rinse your sprouts that you buy at the store really well and that is why, actually, it is suggested that you grow your own. And as you can see, it wasn't hard. It's just rinsing twice a day for three or four days, and then you've got sprouts. It is suggested that you eat one cup of sprouts a day. My way of eating these sprouts will probably be on a salad. I'm going to be making some salads in a jar. I'll have that video up in a week or so. But I think today, I'm gonna try to put them on a sandwich. I am going to make a very thin sliced grilled cheese with some of my homemade sourdough. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description. I'm gonna put a little bit of turkey on there. So I just happen to have sourdough bread in the oven right now, and it's time to come out. So let me pull that out. A 
I've always got something going on around here. All right. Here's one. All right, now let's check our sandwich. Oh, perfect. Oh, yum. That looks amazing. So I'm going to flip this back over because that's looking pretty good and turn my heat off. And I'm going to add, first of all, some sliced up cherry tomatoes. Then some sprouts. You don't want to heat your sprouts because that will actually kill the benefit of them. What do you think? I think it looks amazing. All right, let's see what we think. Mmm. That was really good. Um, it gave it more of a light, uh, springy feel. So it would really be good in the summer. I know a grilled cheese in the hot day of a summer doesn't sound that great, but with these on it and the fresh tomatoes out of the garden, oh man, now I can't wait. <laughs> there are many more ways that you can eat these. You can actually even put them in your smoothies or you can put them through your juicer along with some of your fruits and vegetables. But like I said, the recommended amount to eat per day is one cup. So if you can figure out a way to put it on a sandwich, in a salad, throw some on top of your stir fry or your soup, that would be great. I hope that you are brave enough to give this a try. And if you don't want to grow them yourselves, get some at the store, see what you think. And then maybe if you like them, you'll go ahead and start growing them. Let me know in the comments how you eat sprouts so that I can try that out too. I am so happy that you watched this video. Thank you for coming along on my journey to get back into a healthy eating lifestyle. If you know somebody else that wants to do that, be sure and share. Until next time, blessings on you and yours.